Can I move on? So, one thing that we've always also learned last class is that if I had a cube, uh, when I say a cube, it could be any object. Huh? Look. Um, and I wanted that object to be rounded from everywhere. And I don't want to go edge and bevel. We can also do this at rendering time. So if you go M, and I'll call that cube. Uh, right now it's black because you know it has the glass thing. Uh, but look. Shift A huh? to frame an ob to bring an object close to you. It's Shift A. Um, so now, if I go under my cube preset, uh, I'll make it back to AD because I don't want it to be glass, and that's good. I'll go preview, and as you know, the cube is very sharp; it's not rounded. So one thing I could do, I think I showed it last class. On the first tab on the bottom, the second one from the bottom. Remember, this is a meter cube, huh? so one meter by one meter, like three feet. It's pretty big. So if I go five mm, you will have a five millimeter. You see, it's hard to see, but it's there. Let me go maybe ten, eight. You see now, it's rounded look. So that's kind of cool this way because it does it at rendering time. Especially if you have a very complex object. So look, if now I, I get this polygon and maybe this polygon and I go B uh, and I do this and I'll go shift click again to move it in or out somewhere. Don't worry about the modeling. I just want to show you if I make something more complex now it still does the rounding, the, the fillet. You see? So it's pretty neat. It doesn't matter what object it is. Any edge is fine. It, will, it won't do a chamfer, it won't do a sharp cut, but it'll do a rounding. Actually, with this, maybe you can make it sharp. Let me check. No, I think it's still wrong. Okay, forget what I said. So, let me get rid of those uh, material here. So if I want only one, if I want this one to, let's say, be blue, you can double click in Polygon, press M. Always change the name. Huh? If you don't change the name, it's, it'll use the same color everywhere. And you could make this uh, lighter blue or lavender. And look, now only this one, I think it still have my old diffuse setting to zero. Yeah, this should be 80. And uh, yeah, so that's how you can just change only one. Yeah. You see item list on the right side, shading. Yeah, click here. Yeah, you were there. That's it. And expand this. Yeah, you expand. You see the arrow? Expand it. Not this one. The arrow on the, the, the yeah, don't do anything. This one. Yeah expand and click on the material 
and on the bottom click on the first tab on the right side the tab on the right right side yeah like the first one not this one yeah voila yeah anyone else You, can you share your screen? Uh, uh, if you drag, can you drag to the end? I think if you drag, what you are doing, it will disappear now to the other side. Can you can you right click on the little dot on the top? Yeah, here. Is there a delete here? No. You know what? I'm not even sure. Okay, I can show you a way of doing it, but uh, there should be a, a way. I, I, I'm not sure. I don't know this well. You can go File, Reset. Where is it? Reset. And I think that will only reset. Oh, you have to save your scene. It will only reset the layout. But wait, let, let me try. There's another way of doing it. I just forgot. Um, I don't even know how you created a new one. Is it like this? You, you could just leave it there, make it small. Uh, and Ember, Ember, there's two ways. You can go file file reset and it would reset everything but you have to save your scene first yeah yeah but oh look uh, do you see my screen uh, Amber If you right click on that tiny dot, you can go delete. Oh, oh, you're right. You know, it might just be a Mac thing. So then maybe control click. I have no clue. Yeah, you're right. Mac might be a bit different. Okay. No, no, no. It's fine. Anyone else? So what about if I want this one, the tiny one, to be the same blue? Look, you would double click in Polygon, press M, and you just leave it blue. If you leave it blue, you will get the exact same one. So now they share. You see, if I change this one, they both change. So that's one way of doing it. Did you do it or did you do it with the material or you did it with the modeling? You cannot. Yeah, you'll have to undo it. You, you can if you use a procedural, there's a way in Modo. Uh, if you use a, pros but I don't teach it. There's a way in Modo where Modo can keep uh, the history, but it's a bit more complex, so I don't teach it. So the way I teach now, you will have to undo or redo it. But if you did it with the material like I show, like with this one, then you could change it. You know when I did the red cube? And it, then, then you could change it. But otherwise now, when you go Q, you commit. A bit like in Rhino, it's, it's there at supply. They might have... Actually, they talked about it. There, there might be an unbevel 
I just haven't used it. Now that you ask, I think, but it might be in, in, they might be in 15. In model 15, I think they do have an unbevel. But uh, we're using 14. <laughs> And I, I haven't used it, but I've seen a video. Uh, now that you said, uh, even without the procedural modeling, you can unbevel. Yeah. So often, when you have an object like this, you want to make sure that everything is clean. There's no uh, double point. There's no uh, you know weird thing. So you could go new cleanup, mesh cleanup. and say OK. New mesh cleanup and say OK. And you see, it, it did repair a few things. You see, if you use this, it keeps the history, but it's it's a bit complicated, so I don't teach it. But if you model with this, um, it's called mesh up, mesh operator, then you'll be able to come back and tweak things. Any question, guys? So last class, we've learned that by default in Modo, there was a directional light. Think of this a little bit like a sunlight. It creates parallel shadows and pretty harsh shadows. So when you're in a viewport, the light is usually hidden. So you have to click on the gear icon, visibility, show light, and then you would see, see the light is here. And a directional light, it could be anywhere, it won't change. What's going to change, it's if you rotate it. So look, if I go preview, uh, if I move the, the light around with W, nothing changed. It's like a sun. If you move the sun a little bit, as you know, it's not going to do anything. But if you rotate, if you go E, you'll change the time of the day. You see? But anyhow, it's not a great light for a shelf because it has very harsh shadow. So usually I would convert this to an area light. So we learned this last class. I would go right click, uh, change type, area light. And that gives us, think of this as a soft box, like when you do photography, like the soft box. So the larger the softbox is, the more light it will emit, and the closer to the object. And this one can be rotated, move. Uh, you might need to orbit, because I don't exactly know where it is right now. And that would create very soft shadows, you see? Try to play with the area light. So I went right click, change type to area light. And to see the light, I click on the gear. Visibility show light. That's how I did.
Now, often light, I, I leave them white, but sometimes you can give it a little bit of blue or yellow. Uh, but very, look, if it was outside, I would put a hair of blue. Inside, it would be yellow. But look, just a grain of salt. Uh, you don't want to overdo it. Uh, but it's okay to color a light. And the radiance is the intensity. So if you want your light to be brighter, you would go 3, 5, 4, 6, 7. You see now my light is a hair brighter. Any question? You could get two, three area light. Huh? Sometimes I put one on the back, one on the side. Uh, but often, if I'm in a hurry, I just use only one because it's just easier to tweak. Can I move on? So one thing you have to understand in Modo, and it's pretty similar, you know, in 3ds Max, Blender, and even in the real world, uh, there's two type of lighting. You have the light who is directional, you know, that area light. Think of this if you were holding a soft box. You know, it has a direction where you, you're shining the, the softbox. But it also has a sky. Think And that gray here, think of it as a sky. That gray is not a gray background. People always get confused with Modo. Uh, yes, it looks like gray here. But look, if you go render F9, we learned last class that F8 is a preview. F9 is a better quality is the final. If you go F9, guys, and you save this as a, not JPEG, but if you save it as a PNG or uh, a Photoshop file, you know, if you save it as a file that has mask, this is transparent. The gray doesn't exist. It's purely true. So if I save this as a PNG, open it in Photoshop, this is transparent. So the gray is not a background. Sometimes we use it as a background because it looks cool. It's here to light. So think of that gray as a gigantic global. Think of it as a world, really, really big world. And think of it that each pixel fire a ray of light, like a photon, so, like in real life. You know, like uh, if it's a cloudy day, you're going to get a lot of light, very white. If it's a blue sky day, you're going to get some blue uh, spilling for sure. So think of this as an environment. So that's what we call uh, indirect lighting, non-pointing light. 
And that's usually what makes the render very good. Sometimes in design, they don't even use the area light. Look, if I hide it, you see to hide it's here. Look, some people in design, they'll just use the environment. And it's good enough. Right now it looks bad, but with an environment, sometimes it's good enough. You don't even need a light. Um, so this is to hide. Huh? If I want to hide uh, my shelf, I click here, like in Photoshop. So think of this background. You see on the, on the top is very light gray and on the bottom is darker gray. So each of those pixels fire a ray of light. Uh, and that's what cre create basically diffuse lighting. Yeah? So where do we find this? So look, just to show you, I'm going to hide, turn off the area light. So there's no more light contribution from that source of light. I'm going to switch to shading. And look, there's the blue material, you agree? And underneath, we have the lights. So we can see our area light if we want to. But we also have environment. And if you click on it, there's an intensity. So if I put 1.5, it'll be much brighter. You see? Now I'm getting even much more light from the environment. So Or less. Sometimes I go 0.8. If you don't want to see it, if you, if you want it to light, but you don't want to see it, you can say not visible. So then you see black. And remember, black is transparent. Does that kind of make sense? It's very important that you understand that. So look, just to show you, what about if I hide my environment now? And you see now we're in pitch black. And now I can do the opposite. I can only turn on my area light. And now you can really see what the area light is doing. Or I can put both back on. So often I play with both. It's like fine tuning, you know, how much you need of each. Are you, okay, okay, are you guys okay with that? Will make sense? Okay. So, believe it or not, but often just with gray, you can actually make some decent render. So sometimes I just leave it gray and that's it. I don't even touch it. But, if you go into it, if you go inside the material of the environment, you can see it using a four color gradient. Like I said, it was pretty good. But you could switch this to a, a two color gradient. Maybe if you are doing product design or uh, stuff like that, you could switch it to an overcast sky. I don't think I've used the overcast ever. But you can switch it to a physically based light and then you'll get I'm not going to go into this right now because it's a bit advanced, but then you could get uh, a sky. And that's how they do for architectural rendering. And you can create a sun and all of this. But I, I want to keep this, uh, I want to focus on product right now. But remember, and you see you could give it a sun, but you will need a, not an area light, you will need a, the directional light. And you could change the time of the day, the amount of dust in the air. It's very powerful, the fog. But that's a bit advanced. So we're going to go back to... Sometimes I just put it blue like this to get a little bit of blue, if I make glass. 
So sometimes I'll use it just like that. So I, I can get a bit of a glass look. But we'll go back to four color gradient. Now, when you do fabric, wood, often the, 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 the grace is good enough. Now there's time where you do glass. So I don't really have a glass object right now. Um, let's make a glass object together. I'll go right click and I'll get the sphere. Yeah? And we'll make the sphere a hair larger because uh, I don't know why my shelf is very big. And uh, I'll move it here. Move it in the front. Maybe somewhere here. And I don't really want the... For glass to look good, you need thickness. So in Polygon, I'm going to select all of the top. And to grow selection, it's Shift, Up, Arrow. So I selected all of the top of the of the sphere and I went shift up arrow to grow the selection and then I'll go delete so now my sphere has a hole so now it looks more like a ball and then I can give it thick, thick, uh, thickness We'll just leave it, yeah? Look like this. You select, you go in Polygon, you select the top. You go Shift, Up, Arrow to grow. It's the same as going Select, Grow. Somewhere here there's a Grow. Here, Shift, Up, Arrow. Then you press Delete to get rid of it. And you're welcome. And finally, thicken. You click and you move the blue arrow in or out. Okay, and you know what? Just for fun, we'll make two of them. So Control D, Control D, you remember, is to duplicate and move. Uh, so we have two, and make even a third one. So I'll show you how to do many things. Voilà. You guys okay? So we're gonna make glass, we're gonna make metal, maybe plastic, maybe wood. We'll, we'll do a, a few of them. Um, for sure we're gonna need a better environment lighting. So I can go 
F6 to get the preset window. And one way you go on the asset, that's the motor one, and you can go environment, indoor. We're doing an indoor stuff, so you could use any of those. You could also use the studio if you want. The studio are pretty good. I like this one or this one. Um, but I'm going to go on the mine. I also have those one on the, the one I use. Um, so you see there's a bunch of them. So it really depends what you're doing. If you're doing an outside shot, then maybe uh, something outside. Indoor with sun will be this. If you're doing jewelry, I usually like to have black with high contrast. Often you have to try it and try a different one and see which one work. Here it doesn't really matter. I just want to show you the basic. So often people like to use kitchen. Yeah, we could try that kitchen here and see how it looks. So to bring it, you double click. And you see what happened now? Everything changed. So sometimes what will happen is that you would see the kitchen. Look. But like I said, don't worry about it because we're not going to look at it. So you could hide it. You could just go not visible. So right now it doesn't change much, but it did change the lighting. You see it's picking up uh, some of the gray and the wood. So there's a little bit of uh, yellowish oranges just over here. But it will make a huge... So you see now instead of using the gray, it's like in Photoshop, it put on top the kitchen light. And we could rotate it. So that highlight from, I don't know if it's a window or a light, will cast shadow and you could rotate where you want it. So, and if you want to try a different one, look, you would double click on a different one and it would just replace it. So if I want to try the industrial, I double click. And now look, I'll get the industrial look here. And who knows, maybe in this case, the industrial is better. I'm not sure. We're going to really uh, see it when uh, I'll go back, or maybe indoor. We'll see it when you start to put color. Yeah, actually, I like the indoor. I'll use that one for now. Uh, but I'm going to hide the visibility. So when are you going to really see the difference when you start doing glass or metal? So let's start with metal. Uh, I'm going to select the sphere on the left, go M, and call that metal. Okay? Now, metallic surfaces, they don't have much diffuse. Often they have none or very little. So, because it, it reflects so much. So, this is the amount of reflection. You see, spe when you see specular amount, I, I know we could just use a preset, but it's good to know how to do it from scratch, because then you can tweak the preset yourself. So, when you see specular amount, it's how reflective. Is it a mirror? So 100% look will be a mirror. You see now? It reflects like a mirror. You might tell me yes, but it's blurry because of the roughness. You see it has... Think of rough like a hammer metal, like a brush metal. So if spec is at 100%, you're dealing with a mirror. And if you don't have roughness, it means it's very polished, it's highly polished. So they could have called that slider polish to roughness, but they call it roughness. So if there's no roughness, it's very polished. And you see now we've got a pure mirror. And now we can see our bedroom reflecting. And it's good because it creates very nice highlight. It helps make things look good. Now, often you don't maybe want that much, 
so maybe you want you don't want it to be a mirror maybe you just want 85 percent um, um, often you want a bit of roughness you know you don't want it to be perfectly polished or maybe eight so you'll have to play with it now what about usually for metal that's it you could turn off the diffuse like i said you don't need diffuse in metal so it will look you see it looks even better without the diffuse diffuse at zero that's how metal behaves so metal usually you have very little diffuse or none you have more reflection makes sense and is it polished or rough and that's it usually you, know, you have nothing more to do now we could put a, a bevel so it looks nicer at the edge so here i could do uh, six mil so we have a you see the fillet looks nicer at the edge Are you guys with me? Most of the time, the specular color, you leave it alone. Uh, but there's time where you could change it. And a good example of this is copper, gold, brass. That's where you'll go here. You could also use an image, huh? uh, an orange image, but right now it's this simple. You see, that's how you would do copper, brass, bronze, uh, gold, I'm guessing, would be uh, somewhere here. I'm sure your head is about to explode. <laughs> now, believe me, Modo for material and rendering is super easy. And you don't need to know it all. You don't need to know what a clear amount or... We don't, we, we don't have to use all of it. But Maya, uh, you know, the other, the other one, they, they are more complicated. Like that's one thing who really seduced me back then when I learned Modo was how easy, straightforward the the material were. And remember, we could go F6, go materials, metal, and look, I could pick one of those. That's totally fine. So if I want a matte iron, if I want to try an aluminium um, jewelry, or they have some very complex car paint, you know, with a uh, with metallic fleck. So look, uh, just for fun. One thing you need to know. Maybe I'm going too fast, but I repeat this many times. When you use a preset, look, it always tells you a size. And as you know, that sphere is more than a meter because I scaled mine bigger. <laughs> so this is maybe two meter. So if you want the preset to look exactly like in the photo, you will need to use to scale this to 10 centimeter. Remember that. And I like the burnish because they have fingerprint on it. But same thing, to see the burnish, you will need to make that sphere smaller. So look, you could drag and drop it. Or me, I would just put it here, so I know where it went. And you see now we've got this one. You do see a bit the fingerprint. And you could try another one. You can try a copper. Oh, 
okay? But if I undo, the one we did is actually not that bad. Yes, it could be maybe a bit more rough. Maybe you can go 12. It's maybe too shiny. Um, maybe more reflective too, maybe 92. I'll go 15 here. You guys want to take a break? So I'll see you at 5.15. And remember, remind me to start the recording again, in case I forget. Okay, I'm back. Any question before I move forward? So we've done glass before, I can show you again. Uh, so if I wanted this to be glass, I would press M, name it glass. As you know, glass has no diffuse, so it will be zero. Glass is reflective, but not that much. So we'll go for, you could put uh, a plastic bottle is 4%, so it could be more. Usually glass is very highly polished, so maybe we'll put two, like almost like fully polished. So for glass, diffuse amount zero, roughness to two, and you switch tab. Transparency amount could be almost 100% or 98, or like almost fully, you see? Refraction index, we talked about it. This could be uh, one four, one five, depends how thick. Now oh, it looks better. Here it's not a good example because the the glass is the, the glass is the same thickness everywhere. But uh, if it was thicker somewhere. Look, you don't have to do it, but I'll do it just to show you. So if the glass didn't have the same, it doesn't look very pretty what I did. Um, let me try something. That might look a hair better. Um, let me do one more thing. Voila. If the glass uh, had different thickness, like here, you could first of all color it. If you want to color glass, you don't color it here. You color it in the transparency color. And as you know, some glass are blue, some are green. It just depends on the type of glass. But usually it's just a little bit. And then you could play with the absorption distance. So that means that where it's thinner, it'll get more of the color. So the way you start with this, I usually go 50 mil, and your thing will be very, very green. You'll get a lot of that color. And then you just go up slowly and make it faded away. But the green you see will stay where it's thick. That's a bit advanced for today, but I might as well show you. If you don't un understand the absorption distance, don't worry about it. It's totally fine. So 
So once again, glass, diffusement zero, roughness just a hair, so it's very highly polished, um, almost fully transparent, 98%, little bit of blue or green, refraction index 1415, depends how thick is your glass. And if you did put some color, you could play with the absorption distance. And the higher you go, the less of it you'll get. Now you might think, okay, great, but how can I change where the reflection appears? That's your environment. So if you pick the environment, you know, the I took the indoor one, and you switch to the second tab, texture locator. If you play with the rotation on Y, look here, it'll change. If you go like 30 degree, it's going to rotate. You see now the light is more to the side. So sometimes I do this to adjust it. You see, we don't see the same reflection here. This is my area light, so this is my scene, but the reflection here is changing. But often people don't touch it. But if you wanted to rotate your environment, you would select the environment, texture locator, rotation on Y. Any question? So now the last one, let's make it some sort of plastic. So we go M, let's call it, uh, I don't know, blue. And let's see how it works. So diffuse amount for more, most of the plastic or the wood, AD is good. Then you give the color that you want. And what I want you to understand is that this is how reflective it is, yeah? So we'll go a bit higher, 30. So now it's a very reflective plastic. But the roughness is very wide. So it doesn't look realistic because as you know, when something is highly polished or has water on it, it's usually a, a tiny point, a highlight, and it's very sharp. It's not uh, blended like this. So if you go two, you'll get this, you see? So keep this in mind. Um, if you want to make shiny plastic, the, the roughness should be uh, polished. So it should be almost gone. And that's how, this is maybe too much. I could go 12, maybe even less, uh, eight. Now we get kind of a watery plastic. So the more you play with this, the more you'll get it. And there's nothing wrong using presets. Huh? Now, if you wanted another coat, like a, another layer of lacquer or epoxy, you could use the clear coat, go 100%. I don't use that often. Maybe if I do carbon fiber, but look, it's even more wet. You see, it looks really watery now. But... Uh, that was clear coat, but I don't even know why I show you that. It's it's a something a bit advanced. So now, does that make sense? What about if I want to use a texture? We have a lot in my, uh, you know, in the preset. But sometimes, you know, you'll take your own photo. So I'm going to put wood and we call those texture maps.
and maybe try that one. That's pretty good. So save image. I'll put it on my desktop. So what about maybe I'll do a, a fabric too. That's not too bad. Ah. Actually, I'm not a big fan. Okay. Whatever. We'll uh, we'll stay with this. So what about if I want to put a texture? We could bring it here with add, load image, all of this, but you could just drag and drop it. So let's say I want to put the texture on the blue plastic. Look, if you uh, make model smaller and you take the, the fabric and look, you drag it and you put it here in between, then it would show up here, you see? Now, I made it very watery, so it looks weird for fabric. So what? So when you do this, this image takes care of the diffuse, so it, it overrides this. You see the blue now is driven by that image. So now what I need to do, because fabric is not that reflective, so maybe I'll put one five here. And you see that looks more like fabric. And fabric is a bit rough. It won't be like very shiny. So I'll put 15. Maybe even more actually, 25. So what about if I want to make the texture smaller or larger? You see, under my blue, I've got the fabric. If I switch to the second tab, you can see horizontal wrap, uh, horizontal and vertical wrap. So if I switch this to two, look, it'll be twice smaller. Do you see now? It's very, very tiny fabric can barely see it. So maybe two was too much, but maybe I can go one five. So what about if I want to put wood into the blue uh, cube, the blue shelf? It's the same principle. You grab the wood texture that I got from the web and I bring it, look, to the blue here. And you see now I have the wood texture. Now they are going the wrong way, you can tell. Um, there's many ways you can change this, but the, uh, the, most e the easiest one will be, uh, you could rotate the image in Photoshop, but you could go texture locator and where I'd say UV rotation go 90 degree and now it should go is it going the right way now looks like it. Oh, 180 no, I think it was 90 there's other way of doing it usually I don't do it this way so I might be off of it But if you put it on the ground, then it would, uh, it should uh, apply it very well. So here, what I did, without going too complicated, I didn't use UV rotation because here it's kind of a box and it's a more complex object. Instead of using UV, UV is the most common way. It's how we unfold object. 
uh, I went cubic. Cubic is just a cheap way, a very quick way of taking a square object and put it the texture everywhere. Uh, they actually both look good. But yeah, I don't want to go too deep in texturing today. I just want to show you a few tricks. So when you do a render like this, you can do some sort of a color correction like you would do in, uh, in Photoshop. So look, I can click on render here. And if I go underneath, it's a final color output. And here you can do some adjustment. It's, it's a bit like Photoshop here. So the input gray, so look at the preview, you'll see the difference. The input gray, I usually try 0.9 and see the difference. And you see it, mixed, it makes things darker, more contrasted. So here, it's already pretty dark, maybe not too much. The white level is the opposite. It'll make it brighter. So here it helps a bit. So I usually use those two. This, the gray is more for contrast, and I go down usually. And the white is more for brightness, and I go down. Most CG computer graphic image, they have too much saturation. So I would put 20% in tone map, between 10 and 30% usually. Okay, uh, the vignette will darken the edges. Sometimes it's nice, it creates a nice little effect. So, in jewelry, I would do a lot. I would go 400%. If I'm, you see now, it's darker here. But here, we could just maybe 80, just a little bit. And bloom would make things glow. So, if you have a neon light, um, any type of uh, things that glow, um, it would make it like really, really, uh, like this will, will, will glow, you see. Now the bloom, you can only see it when you do final render. So you will have to go F9. Okay, so look, if I go bloom, you would see it now. Look here. And the radius, it's how far it blooms. So if you go uh, 10, it'll go very far, you see. And the threshold, it's how much bloom. So if you go down, it's reverse. If you go down, you'll get more, look. So that's very useful when you do jewelry stuff. Here, maybe 120 is enough. Uh, and maybe uh, even a bit more, 15. So look, without the bloom, with the bloom. It does add a little bit. Now, frankly, this is not a great render, like my lighting. Maybe the environment light I took also is not the best. Uh, what I could have tried to do, look, let's go back to the environment. And we could try a different one, but we could also, you see it's 0.9. Maybe make it 1.1 .1 so it's brighter. Let's see what it does. Yeah, maybe that helps a little bit. So anyway, we'll keep it like this. We'll do a final render.
and then we'll save the image. I'll save it as a JPEG. And then we'll go in Photoshop to show you. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. Good, very good question. How can we get a, a, a larger resolution? It's here on the render. So you see right now it's 1280. So you're right. I could go higher. I could go as high as I want. Uh, but I'll go 1920 by 1080. It's pretty much HD, like when you watch TV. So now if you render, it'll be much higher res. You see it showing you half of the size. You see, if you go 100%, it's very high. All right. And my screen is okay. So yes, we can uh, we can do that here for sure. Okay, so then we open Photoshop. I, I'm, uh, I'm not good at Photoshop, but I'll show you a few little tricks. Uh, I, I just have a few tricks to speed up the process. Uh, I don't even use layer, you'll see. Uh, I just, uh, I'll show you a few tricks even without layer, so it's faster. Um, did I save the last one? So you see that's HD resolution. So usually what I do, uh, if I did a PNG, huh, this will be gray. This should be uh, transparent. I should have made my floor uh, go further. Sorry, I forgot. So those auto tone, auto contrast, auto color, they are based on AI. They are based on artificial intelligence. They actually complicated algorithm. They don't always work, but I usually give it a try. So look, I'll go auto tone. And you see it added a lot of blue. So usually what I'll do after I go edit, fade auto tone, control shift F. And I'll, and I'll see the difference. Actually, it helps, but you just need a little bit. So I'll go maybe 20, 15, 20. So that was auto tone. Then I'll go to contrast, didn't do much, so then I'll undo. Auto colors usually is pretty good. That helps, you see, the difference. It's pretty big, makes it way less, uh, makes the color more solid. Auto color. So I usually use the mostly auto tone, auto color, but sometimes auto contrast. Sometimes they don't approve, huh? and then I go Control Shift F to blend them like it was a layer. Another one I use will be Shadow Highlight. Look here, you see those dark area? The adjustment shadow highlight will brighten the whole image. So I go OK, Control Shift F, and then I'll just use a little bit of it. Look, just a hair, just to brighten the dark corner, maybe like just 8 or 10.
if sometimes I even play with the level and if I do level I look at the red and anywhere where there's no tone like this I would clip them a little bit look because it means there's not much information if there was nothing I would go up to here but if there's a little bit I won't take the risk but you have to do it per channel you see like this now that's going to contrast a lot so we're going to have to be careful with that one it might be too strong uh, maybe a hair here and then I'll do the same you see now it's too contrasty I will go edit fade level and I'll play with it see the difference I think a little bit help, maybe 10%. You could play with the curves, there's a lot of tricks, but I'm just, sometimes I don't do the level, you, you just, but yeah, auto tone, auto color for sure. Shadow highlight, quite often I use this. Another one I like to use is photo filter, because this one, could add yellow or blue so if it's an outside shot you might want to or if you do metal a bit of blue is good but if you do inside shot you can put yellow so let's try it photo filter so that's the yellow um, there's many filter I for yellow I use the default the warming 85 and if I want to go blue I use the cooling filter and if you ask me here I think the yellow is more pretty and same thing, I'll blend it. Just a hair. It's a lot of subtle thing that helps the image for sure. Sometime, I don't know if we need this here, but sometime I'll use vibrance and I'll remove a hair of saturation and I'll compensate with vibrance. But same thing, it's often very, very subtle. But if something was a hair too saturated, I will do it this way. Am I going too fast or? Another trick, look, not always, but I would usually double click on background so it becomes a layer. Uh, you can go Control G to, uh, sorry, is it Alt G? I forgot. No, then I forgot. Um, there's a hotkey to duplicate, I forgot right click duplicate layer I used to know how to duplicate a layer in Photoshop but I forgot Control G or J thank you so a Control J thank you to duplicate and sometimes what I do I'll set it up to screen and it will make it very bright but you just fine tune it you see it'll give a little bit of punch you use like 9-10% and then you have to flatten it so I have a layer on screen at 9 or 10 percent yeah Then there's other little trick, you know, like uh, you could use the blur if you wanted the. There's no background here, but 
you know if you wanted some of the further to be blur you could blur this a little bit I think you understand this uh, sometimes I use the dodge to create a highlight so if I wanted more highlight here you see like a glow I will dodge it but like I say I'm no I'm not a Photoshop expert so that's pretty much where my knowledge ends Now, what about if I wanted an object to become a light? So look, I could go in Polygon. I'm going to select 2 here. Shift-click 2. And to go around, I'll go L. L makes a loop. You see? So once again, I select 2 here, 2 here. I go L. And then I go M. And here I'll call that neon. So now if we preview, we get just white stripe. But if you go under your material, the second tab, the last one is called luminous intensity. It's like a self illumination. So if you turn this to 1, it'll become a light, you see. And it will light, huh? it'll, it'll create light. You could go higher, you could give it a bit of a yellow. Uh, there's a lot of things you could do. But uh, yeah, that's how you would create uh, a neon. So I, I went under the material, the second tab, and here, luminous intensity. And the bloom will get affected. So if you render this, the bloom will, will help a lot. So look, if I turn bloom now, you see it would, it would really glow. 